Heroes, another weekly podcast episode. We're so glad you joined us. First of all, sir, it's a pleasure and an honor just to meet you. Thank you so much for all you did to help America fulfill her awesome destiny. And welcome to our weekly podcast, History is Heroes. Thank you, Miss Roberts. I'm delighted to be here. Sir, where and when were you born? I was born February 12th, 1809, in Hardin County, Kentucky. My parents were both born in Virginia. My mother, God rest her soul, I'm sad to say, died when I was 10. And then my father and I moved from Kentucky to Indiana when I was eight. It was a wild region with many bears and other wild animals still in the woods. There I grew up. Of course, when I came of age, I did not know much. Still, somehow, I could read, write, and later, I even put myself through law school. How do you feel about the legacy of Abraham Lincoln? Mostly good, I guess. Folks seem to hold me in high regard, and that's awfully nice. Plus, my last name became the capital of Nebraska, which is sort of odd because I never set foot in Nebraska. Let's move on. Was the Civil War more about slavery or states' rights? The South supported slavery because of financial factors, and the North resented it because of moral reservations. You know, every region has their political conflicts, but think of it this way. No slavery, no war, period. I see. Yes, yes. Um, On a more personal note, how did you and Mary Todd meet? Oh, (laughs) My, well, in December 1839, I visited the home of my good friends, Ninian W. Edwards and his lovely wife, Elizabeth. Mary Todd is Elizabeth's younger sister. She was staying with them at the time, and so I was introduced to her. She was beautiful. Sounds like it might have been love at first sight. When did you get married, and how about a little bit about your family? Mary and I got hitched, married, on November 4th, 1842. We wed in the same place that we first met, at her sister Elizabeth's home. As for children, Mary and I have four children. Three, I'm sad to say, are dead. Edward died of diphtheria. William died of the typhoid fever. And then Thomas died of tuberculosis. Robert, thankfully, lives on. In fact, he will die of old age long after I am gone. He will live to be 82. No kidding. Wow, that is old. Are there any other thoughts on your legacy? Yeah, I have some questions. Whose idea was it to stick my face on the penny? Good Lord, I am arguably the most important president in this country's history, and you stick my mug on your most inconsequential coin? Why couldn't you have given some guy like Fillmore or Nixon the penny and given me the quarter? Hmm, good point. Well, George Washington is on the quarter. I know, I know. The nation's capital is named after Washington. He has the tallest monument in D.C. He has a state named after him. And he's also on the $1 bill. Well, anyway, there are some remarkable things I can say about myself. Did you know that I am the tallest president ever? No. Yes, that's right. I stand six feet four inches. Most men at this time are only five feet six inches. When I sit and they stand, we are eye to eye. Also, I am the first president to ever sport a beard, although there have been four after my time, I understand. One more thing. I had a strange dream just before going to the theater on that dreadful evening. I heard crying in the White House. When I asked one of the people in my dream who had died, He told me that it was the president. True story. Whoa, now that's weird. Sir, I want to thank you so much for being our guest on this evening's episode of History's Heroes. Miss Roberts, I just want to say truly, it has been an honor to be here. Thank you, and thanks to all of the great listeners out there. Good night. Lincoln was the first president to be assassinated. He was killed on April 15, 1865 by John Wilkes Booth, a 
the time of his death, Lincoln was 56 years old. Well, that's all for now. Tune in next week for a brand new segment of History's Heroes. You'll never believe who we will have as our guest. See you then.